Hello, welcome back to my bench. Um, I couldn't take it. I just had to see if this little PLL circuit worked uh, by hooking it up to a radio. And what I've got here is an old ICOM IC25A. It is fairly basic radio from, oh, back in the 60s, I would guess. I, or no, not 60s. 70s, 80s, I don't know, somewhere around there. I can't, uh, I don't see anything with a date code on it. No, I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up and see if I can find it and put a message up here someplace. But anyway, so I've got my little um, PL or CTCSS encoder from the Arduino from the uh, a previous video hooked up here running on its own off of the um, protoboard 5 volt supply and right at this moment I have it set at 123 hertz and um, gone to the radio so here's what I've done to it I did play around with it a little bit um, and when I first started I had the output going from the radio directly off of my little trimmer resistor which varies my up and down uh, output uh, and when I did that I ran into problems I looked at the uh, manual for the IC25 and found out if we look at the manual over here I found out that if you look where's my pointer hello pointer there we are if you look, the IC25E version has a tone button on, evidently on the microphone, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's on the radio, I've never seen one. Um, but basically it just uh, shorts a pin in here to ground and turns on the tone. Now that would be the tone for... Uh, 1.7 kilohertz. I forget what it was, but it was a, a tone that used to use to turn on uh, repeaters. We don't use that anymore. But I thought, you know what? If uh, since that works, why don't we just see what we can uh, find out on the uh, in, on the schematic and use that tone input placement? So, if we look over here on the schematic, the tone comes right into this uh, jack here, which is this one, um, which you can't see, but anyway, it's it's J4, and goes right up to this little uh, TC5002P. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's got a crystal on it, so it must be a tone generator chip. Um, and it just grounds this pin 5 right here. So... And the output of that goes through a little capacitor, a 0.1. And if we go down to the other side of the schematic, that 0.1 goes over to right, to right here at the base of this Q5. So that's where it injects the tone, the 1.7 kilohertz tone to turn the... Turn the um, uh, receiver on on the uh, repeater in the old days. So I thought, well, why don't let, let's try just plugging it into there and see what happens. Well, when I first did that, let's get rid of the schematic here. Hello, go away. Thank you. When I first did that, I ran it right off. Like I said, right off of my little um, resistor here, and over to the base of Q5 which is right there. Um, and that just cut out all of my microphone level. It just, I had no, no deviation at all. Uh, so I said, okay, well, not surprising. I'm sure I'm loading it down. So then I stuck in off of the output of this resistor. I stuck a little one microfarad capacitor. Um, because I wanted to pass lower frequencies than the 17 kilo or 1.7 kilohertz, um, and 
it still loaded it down pretty badly, but not as bad as before. I could still get some audio through it. So then I said, okay, we're loading it down. Let's try a 100K resistor. So I got a 100K resistor in line with this capacitor. So we're coming out of D9 over to this capacitor to block the DC voltage, which is uh, 220 microfarads, into this uh, 5K trimmer, uh, out of the 5K trimmer into the 1 microfarad capacitor and into a 100K resistor, which then goes right over to the base of Q5. Well, um, if we look at the scope, we can see I've got, yes, it's, it's live for the scope. It's not moving because it's actually triggered. Imagine that. There we go. Um, I've got about 460 millivolts uh, at 100. And it's, it's having a hard time reading it because it's not much there, but it is 123 hertz. This thing can't read, read it exactly, but trust me, it's at 123 hertz as it says so over here um, and I thought well okay that works so we need what we need to do and I don't have anything uh, can I use my phone alright so that's just noise that's about 0.4 volts or 0.4 kilohertz deviation and see if we can read this It's too low for it to read uh, PL count. It has to be a little higher than that. But it is 123. And if we look at the scope, there it is. Okay. So now what we got to do, take it off the dummy load, put it onto a repeater, and see if it works. So, unscrew this. Put it into a repeater and put it on duplex minus. Okay. Thought I heard somebody in there real quick. Thought I did. Well, wait a minute. See if there's anybody on there. There doesn't appear to be. All right. Well, let's see if uh, we can bring the repeater up. It's the only one in town that I can get to that has uh, PL that I know of for sure, and it's 123, and it's um, one of the local repeaters. All right. Let's give it a shot. WADKM testing, testing radio PL tones. WADKM. Yes! It got in. WADKM, WADMIA. All right, uh, must have got the PL. WADMIA, mobile. WADMIA, mobile, WADKM. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I think I got it down a little bit more solid than it was before without, uh, without any of the noise in it. It's amazing what you can do with an Arduino. Yeah, this is an Arduino Nano, um, and it's switch selectable for all of the PL tones through a little two-dollar display, uh, OLED display, and uh, the Nano's about four bucks, so mm, less than ten dollars, I guess, for the whole thing. And I'm using an ICOM 25 IC 25A, uh, and it appears to be working. All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I didn't catch your name. The name here is Dave. Here's Branson. Bravo Romeo Alpha, November Sierra, Oscar November.
Okay, Brantz, very good. Uh, I appreciate the comeback, and um, I am making a video here, so uh, if would you mind being uh, a voice on the video? I, I don't mind. Um, yeah, very fine. I'm, I, I love helping people, so yeah, very fine. Uh, <laughs> sound very good, uh, but I am at my destination here, so I will clear out here. Uh, w 8 and I. W-A-D-K-M, appreciate it very much, sir, and you have a very good day. Uh, W-A-D-K-M, clear. There you have it. Absolute positive proof. It got into the repeater. I got an answer, and the guy said it sounded good. So, if you have old radios laying around, don't lie to me. I'm sure that you've got one you bought at a ham fest somewhere because it was 10 bucks and you couldn't turn it down. Right here. Um, you know, you can put a PL tone into it, make a little box, stick it on the outside, lead your wires inside of it, figure out where it goes, and uh, you got PL tones for an antique radio and just push buttons around to make sure it works or give it the right frequency. Hey, there we go. I love it. It was worth the trouble and the effort. So, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, and uh, comments are readily accepted in the bottom. I try to answer them all, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell so you can see more of the silly stuff that I do when I do it. So, until next time. <laughs>